Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO. The WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. My guest today on Sports Files is Kobe Cotton, part of the internet sensation sports entertainment group, Dude Perfect. Six years ago in College Station, Texas, attending Texas A&M, twin brothers Kobe and Corey Cotton, Garrett Hilbert, Cody Jones, and Tyler Toney, all former high school basketball players, began filming trick shots and started posting them on YouTube. As Kobe would tell me, they were just college roommates having a little fun. Well, that little fun has turned into a phenomenon. The group Dude Perfect is now a huge sports entertainment group. They have appeared on shows like Good Morning America. They have worked with stars from the sports world, such as Russell Wilson and Stage and Screen. And they have been viewed over a billion times on YouTube, a billion times. Now the guys from Dude Perfect are about to embark on their own television show on CMT. 27-year-old Kobe Cotton, one of the twins, took some time out of a hectic schedule to chat with me at a recent appearance in Memphis at the Bass Pro Shop Pyramid. The crowds to see Dude Perfect were huge, with most of their fan base being children. Today, Kobe Cotton joins me to talk about the rise of Dude Perfect, their allegiance of fans, and how they developed those jaw-dropping trick shots. And it's next on Sports Files. Kobe, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It's glad to be here. Thank you so much. This is unbelievable. First of all, you're oh, here in yeah. Memphis at Bass Pro Shop. Right. The kids and kids and kids and parents and parents that were waiting in line to get autographs and to get selfies and all that from right, you guys. It's, right. it's absolutely amazing. You have to pinch yourself sometimes. Well, we're very honored. It's really cool to show up at this. And obviously, Dale Jr. was here, which is awesome. But I mean, we had so many kids and families and high school students and college students come out. I mean, truly, truly humbling. Really, really cool. It was a blast for us to meet them. Six years now, right? Right. Since you started? Six years. How many views We just videos? crossed a billion views. A billion? views pretty insane yeah it, it really is did it start on a whim did it you just wanted to, to have a little fun how did right. it all start at texas a&m right. so we were all roommates at texas a&m we all met through a bible study there and we had a grass backyard you know typical and we had a basketball goal back there so we would just play horse and one of the guys tyler told garrett hey man i'll bet you a jimmy john sandwich i can make a hook shot from behind <laughs> the tree and he nailed it and all of a sudden we're trying to top each other and we're videoing each other they put a little video together and launched it and it took off yeah, the, the video end of it, because first of all, the trick shots are hard enough, but to make sure the video's right, that you get the shot, that you don't miss right. the shot, how tough was that? Yeah, it's an, it's an important piece of it. Um, we tell people a lot of times, you know, we're, we're videographers as much as we are entertainers or athletes, you know, it's definitely important to make sure to video it the right way or else it's not that interesting for people. All right, so you do the first one. Yep. You post it. Yep. Do you get immediate reaction? <clears throat> so we posted it and shared it on Facebook post on YouTube and shared it on Facebook, and all of our friends seemed to really get a kick out of it. I don't know what it was, and they grew from there. And two mornings later, my brother woke up to a call at 6.30 in the morning from Good Morning America, and they wanted to show it that morning. And we, of course, were just running through the college house, freaking out, you know, thinking, oh, it'll never get better than this. And that video just kept growing, and so we made another one, and lo and behold, people continued to enjoy them. Did you think it was a real call from Good Morning America or oh, a prank? Oh, we definitely start? thought it was a prank call at first, for sure. That is amazing. And your brother, by the way, a twin, right? <laughs> twin brother, Corey. There was originally six of you, and now right? there's five? Correct, correct. So we had another friend, great guy, Sean. He actually decided to become a doctor. So highly encourage what he did. Great decision. And uh, he still lives in Dallas, still a good buddy of ours. Don't get to see him as much as I like to. All right, so it takes off. People are starting to view this thing. You go on Good Morning America. Right. Now what happens? So they aired it on Good Morning America. Um, then we made the ranch video, it was our next video, and people really enjoyed that one.
video that really took off was the world's longest shot at Kyle Field, which is Texas A&M's football stadium. And Tyler just went up to the third deck. Of course, we had to ask them permission, but A&M let us in, which is awesome. And Tyler went up there, and after a few tries, nailed the shot, which became the world's longest basketball shot. Kobe, i got to be honest with you, because I remember seeing that video. Right. People here in Memphis, I'm, I'm in the local media, so right. people were looking at this going, what do you think? And I'm skeptical. I said, there's no way this is real. Trick photography, I'm always skeptical with right. things on, on YouTube. I shouldn't be, maybe. Obviously, this was real, and it's amazing that you did it in a few attempts. It wasn't a thousand yeah, attempts. Yeah, it took us about a half hour to make that shot. So not bad. We had four basketballs, so it took a little bit of time to get them back up to the third deck. What's been the biggest challenge that you guys have had as far as doing one of these tricks? We did one out of a slingshot. So we had a tree that was at our ranch, or Tyler's family's ranch. We cut down a tree and we planted another one. There you go. But we cut down a tree and built it. It had you know, the natural Y shape. And so we used elastic cords and built a slingshot with a duct tape pouch. And it, it was so hard to get it all right because the ball came out of the pouch differently. It was just crazy how tough it was. But we stuck with it, determination, and finally got it done. So it was neat. It pays off. It, it really does uh, in more ways than one. But how do you come up with the ideas? And is it all Oof. of you coming up with the ideas? So I got to give Tyler a lot of credit on the ideas. He comes up with quite a few of them. His mind is just a strange place. I don't know how he comes up with these ideas. But he says he can play an idea through in his YouTube mind and see if it'll be entertaining or not. So we have a whiteboard now where we write them all down and hang on to the good ones. How often do you try one out? Do you try to tape one I'd and say, then post it? I'd say we're filming videos most days of the week. Probably wow. three days out of the week we're filming right now. And the other day is, you know, we're, we're planning for the next video. Or you're coming to Memphis. Or we're traveling to Memphis. So you do the, the longest shot, the world's longest shot, right. Kyle Field. Now it just completely blows up. Right. Is that the point that you realized <laughs> that you can make something out of it, not only where people watch videos, but you can make a very handsome living out of it. Right, so we, we had no idea that anybody got, could get paid anything for making a YouTube video. And so as soon as people started watching, we found out that you can make a little bit of money doing it. And so then we just kept making the videos. And at some point it took, so we've been doing it for six years now, took four years to where we were able to do it full time. But now for the last two years, we've been able to do it full time, which is really, really cool. And it, and it was a lot of hard work to get to that point. So you never heard of the Gangnam Style guy? Did he make oh, his, man, his own light bulb YouTube, that right? that nice one video, and there he is, two billion views. So now you go out there and you perform and talk to celebrities. Right. You've, so give me some of the folks that you've had a chance, some of the athletes, maybe other celebs from, yeah, from yeah, yeah. other walks of life that Gosh, you've had a I'm chance. Sure, I'm sure I'll forget some, but as of here in Memphis, one of the reasons that we're here is because we've got a relationship with Bass Pro and we got to work with NASCAR and Dale Jr. on a video. So we make a series called Stereotypes. We started with Trick Shots and now one of our favorite series, video series is, is called Stereotypes. Tell me, tell me about that. So we did Driving Stereotypes is what it's called. So it's, it's just kind of poking fun at all the different type of people that you see on the road. So you might have the mom arm and she, you know, sticks the arm out to keep the sun back. Um, or the worthless co-pilot who's always falling asleep at night when he's supposed to be helping you stay awake as right, you're driving. Right. So Dale Jr. was so cool to work with. Got to have him and he did some hilarious ones with us. So you have to check it out. All right, so what other celebs? So we did with Dale Jr., Russell Wilson, uh, Johnny Football, um, did some stuff with a, a guy named Johnny Hecker who's a punter for the Rams. Um, gosh, Tim McGraw did a video with him. Wow. Yeah. Um, got a lot of fun stuff coming up. Can't tell you about those just yet, but we got a few in the pipeline. It should be pretty fun. Are these celebs now asking to do a video with you? Are, so, you, are you going to their people? How's that working? It's not always the case, but because our videos have become really popular, we've been fortunate enough for a few of them to reach out. So depending on what they're involved in, if they have a charity that they're looking to you know, help promote or some type of product that they're working with, a lot of times their agencies or people will reach out to us, which is super fun. I mean, obviously we love that. Kobe, we see a lot of dirt, unfortunately, on right. YouTube, right. on the internet, and the kids, yep. you want them to stay away from them. The parents have right. to certainly watch over them. No doubt. You're, what you guys are doing is good, wholesome, clean, fun. Yep. It's sports. It's being active. Right. It's a benefit for these kids, and that's why you have so many right. of these parents wanting to bring their kids by totally. to get an autograph from totally. you guys. Yeah, no, it's, it's very interesting. You know, when we first started, I think the videos are just a reflection of who we are as a group of guys. You know, I mentioned earlier we met in a Bible study. Jesus is the most important part of all of our life, uh, lives. And so 
we wanted our videos to be a reflection of the type of people that we were and the type of people that we want to be. And so it's very important to us that they're family friendly and stuff that the entire family can enjoy from the toddlers up to the grandparents who watch it with them. Well said. Um, craziest stunt that you guys have tried? Oh gosh. I mean, the slingshot one was nuts. There was one that Tyler ended up being successful at. It's called the boomstick. You can look that one up. It's a baseball shot. So we used a baseball bat with a basketball on a baseball tee and hit it off really far into a basketball goal. And that I was see tough, that yes. but it was so cool. And Tyler's genuinely excited at the end of that shot. Anything that you've done that was deemed dangerous? <laughs> we do some shots off the roof, um, some That's shots dangerous. out of moving vehicles. That's um, dangerous. So definitely we say our stuff is family friendly, but not everybody should try what we do. We have a lot of stunt people who are with us and always under professional supervision when it's anything that's, uh, that could be dangerous. Oh, wow. So you, you lean on people we that do, no know doubt. exactly what they're no doing doubt. to make sure the safety. For sure. What you just told me a few moments ago, there's things that you, you can't really say that's coming right, up. Right, right. But what are some things maybe down the road that you would like to do? Yeah. Well, one really exciting project that we're working on right now is we just recently announced that we have a TV show coming out. Isn't that amazing? So we're starting to film it next week. Uh, and it'll be launched early next year. And it's going to be on CMT, probably called The Dude Perfect Show. So we're really excited about that uh, and about to be working real hard on it here for the next little bit. So you guys are going to probably go up another level because it's going to be TV stardom. I mean, one we'll thing see. is internet, YouTube, yeah, you're going to be on the, right, right, right. the tube. Are you ready for this? You're ready you know, for all this notoriety? Uh, I think one thing that's been nice is it has been slow growth over mm -hmm. this time. It's not an overnight success. So you've gotten success. used to it a little bit? So it's definitely been a little bit of us being able to get used to that. And also, you know, we're just grateful for the opportunities that we've had so far and the ones we continue to be, you know, handed. So it's been really neat. It's also neat to watch you with your your fans. You, right. you give them time. You appreciate them because if they're not viewing <laughs> your videos, right. you guys aren't where you are today. And I see that the way you interact, especially thank with you, the kids. You. That's very important to you guys. Appreciate it, yeah, no doubt. It's it's interesting on YouTube because they have that view counter, you know, and as you put out a video and it has 100,000 or 200,000 or 3 million views, or 30 million views, it's easy to just see the numbers and forget that there's somebody behind the TV or the computer screen or the phone watching it every time. And when we get to come to an event like this, it's a great reminder. As we mentioned, you're a twin. Right. Give me a crazy story from oh, gosh. having a brother who's a twin. When we were really young, I don't know how old, I have to ask my parents, but we crawled out of the crib and we got in the fireplace and we got all the soot and we covered the entire room in the soot from the fireplace. And our parents, I don't think they were able to leave us alone in the room for that much time after that again. What's the, um, what's the reaction you've gotten from students that you went to school with at Texas A&M right. that knew you, they right. went to class with you, right. maybe in the same dorm, and all of a sudden they're <laughs> like, what's going on here? And now you've ballooned. Well, I'm sure that the ones who were telling us we should have been studying more that <laughs> week that we made the video have questioned that a little bit. But the truth is, we could never have expected this. It was definitely a God thing. They're probably better off doing their solid career than we are, so. What about family reaction and, and how supportive the families Our are? Our families, we, we've we been very, very blessed, very grateful. We have incredible families across the board. The five of us, there's four families represented because of my brother. Right. But really awesome families, and they've been incredibly supportive throughout. I do something at the end of my show okay. with, with my interviewees, and it's, it's interesting because it's not it's a little bit different, but it's right. not unlike what you guys do. Sure. Tell me about that concept of what you do with the deserted island. And right, right, right. Well, I got to give Tyler credit. Tyler's a funny guy, and he really enjoys doing interviews. So when we get a chance to work with athletes, we did one with Odell Beckham Jr. And so we'll sit down in some funny place where we're filming, and Tyler will just ask him questions. And we normally have a goofy microphone and a bunch of silly questions that we'll ask. And so Tyler interviews the athletes or the celebrities or really anybody that we're working with. And uh, we typically get some fun stuff out of that. And do they? Do you ask him the three things you would bring to a? Yeah. So one of the island? questions he asks, and I'll ask you, is okay. the three question or the three things that you would bring to a desert island. What are three things you would bring to a desert island? Okay, we're talking about an island, so there's an water around island. it. So I, I'm bringing a boat and leaving there. there can, I bring a, can I bring a boat? That's a great answer I'm, to the question. I'm bringing a boat. I don't even need the other two things because I'm because I'm, I'm getting out of there with the boat. All right, let me ask you five for the road. This okay. is what we do great, great. on Sports Files. And these are sports questions, but we have a little bit uh, something different at the end. Sure. Very simple. Favorite professional sports team? Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm going to say Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavs? I'm a Mavs guy. We're hoping to do a video with Dirk this year. 
Have you ever met Mark Cuban? Uh, no, I have not. Huge fan of Shark Tank, though. Would I love to meet Mark. Favorite pro athlete of all time? Well, as of recently, I'm going to say Steph Curry. Uh, we've had a chance to meet him on a couple of occasions, and just a class act, really high on our list of somebody we'd like to do a video with. So we've been talking, trying to figure out the timing, but that's something we'd really love to do. He's a great guy. This is not a. This is not part of the uh, five okay. questions, but what athlete who you have not had a chance to meet with Ooh. would you like to meet? Jordan Spieth is somebody we would really like to do something Tex with. Texan yeah, like you. He is. He is. Even though he went to UT and we're a &M guys, uh -oh. we'll forgive him for that. But we'd love to do a video with Jordan Spieth. All right, Kobe, your favorite music, genre of music, musician, oh, band. What do you like to listen yeah. to? Man, that's a great one. You know, i got to be honest, I'm a T-Swift fan. You know, I'm a big T-Swift fan. Uh, I love country. So as an Aggie, I think we all like country music. But we, we've always said we'd love to be in a T-Swift music video. It may happen the way you maybe, guys are going. And maybe. you mentioned you did something with Tim McGraw, we right? Did. We did. He was great. What a great guy. Who would you like to do something with as far as videos are concerned? <sighs> That's tough. Putting you on the spot. Yeah, here. no, it's good. Um, I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody really great that we've all talked about. Tyler loves Keith Urban. Mm -hmm. Tyler's a big guitar guy. He can play really, really well. He's always wanted to do something with Keith Urban and have Keith do a shot with us and Tyler play the guitar. <laughs> there you go. Favorite movie of all time? Probably Remember the Titans. It's just tough to beat. Favorite television show of all time? Oh, you know, I got hooked on Parks and Rec and watched the entire season, I mean, the entire set of seasons this last year. So that or The Office. Is Parks and Rec off now or is it still gone? I think they finally finished. They had their last season this last year, I think. All right, so what takes over for Parks and Rec? You got to find a new favorite. You know, now. I'm watching Blacklist right now. And I really like it. It's a good lot. stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it's a great show. That's got me hooked. You got a great smile. It's always there. I love that. Keep that going. I know you, you guys are sensations on YouTube. You're going to be on television as well. It's an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. You. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanks very much. Us. We'll take a break. Overtime is coming up next. To admit seeing dude perfect at the bass pro shop pyramid was a bit of a surprise to me but watching the big cypress open national duck calling championships well not so much that's right in their sweet spot and so competitors from as far away as colorado louisiana and minnesota converged on memphis to show off their goods in an event open to everyone and for all you duck hunters out there this will be something up your alley for the rest of you this will be an educational experience so hold on to your ducks, some calling is about to go down. All right, so for, for those of us that have never experienced duck calling, either professionally or just uh, out hunting ducks, what are these guys doing here today? Well, this is a, this is a duck call blowing contest, not so much a duck calling of wild ducks contest. This is about more playing the tune than it is actual calling the ducks. However, it's rooted in calling ducks. These guys are required to blow a, a hail call, feed call, comeback call, lonesome hen, and the fifth thing they're judged on is the overall routine. How well they paint the picture to the judge's eyes of calling a flock of ducks from way in the distance, call them to them, lose them, call them back and land them. How does this compare you, know, you mentioned the five different types of calls they're going to do. For somebody that's actually out there, you know, with a gun in his hand trying to hunt ducks, how, what's the yeah, difference? That's a good question. Well, it's kind of that you kind of what we're doing is we're condensing calling a flock of ducks into a minute and 30 seconds. You've got a, a time limit of a minute and 30 seconds here. You'll notice as a red light comes on, that red light comes on at a minute and 20. It gives you 10 seconds to shut down. But to get back to your original question, the idea here is if you see a bunch of ducks on the distance, 
you're going to blow a hail or a long distance call to get your attention. It's like high ducks coming across the woods or ducks out over the river. You're, you're blowing loud and long trying to get their attention. So that's kind of, that's the hail call part of it. Uh, now that takes sometimes longer than a minute and 30 seconds to get them started. So then the next part might be feed call or the stuff that you do in between there that, that is more duck-like or sounding like several different ducks. You know, instead of a, the loud hail call like the now we're going to start sounding like duck. And then the feed call stuff. So that's what you're doing to try to entice them. You're really trying to tell them that them decoys are alive and there's cold beer and hot pecans for everybody. You know, that's kind of what the whole deal is all about there. Um, and then kind of with the comeback call. So in a hunting situation, you've got this bunch of ducks started. Now they're starting to leave. They seen something they didn't like. They might have decided to go on. So now we've got to call them back. So then you, you put together a comeback sequence to try to talk these ducks into coming back. So you get them called back and okay, this is gonna be the done deal here. Then you finish them in the decoys. So that's kind of how it is. We're just shortening it into a minute and 30 second routine. How does the guy go around selecting the duck call? Because there's lots of manufacturers. Yeah. So are they breed specific? To uh, some degree. To some degree, they're breed specific. You know, pretty much when you talk about a duck calling contest or duck hunters, um, you're talking about calling matter ducks. They're the most vocal ducks. They're the most popular duck we hunt in North America. And that's what most people, as far as blowing duck calls, is all about, is calling matter ducks. However, there are calls made for wood ducks, for widgeons, for pintails, for all the different species of ducks. You know, the good Lord gave them a voice for a reason, to communicate. So they make sounds and communicate back and forth. Fortunately, most of them will somewhat respond to matter calling. Now, I looked at a map online here, and Memphis sits right in the middle of the migratory patterns. Is We're right dead center in the middle of the lower Mississippi Flyway. This is where everything comes together. If you look at a migration map and think of the Mississippi River as a main funnel that's all coming right here, East Arkansas, West Tennessee, this is winters, more, matter, more continental matters in this part of the world than anywhere in North America. Good duck hunting area. Rather, most of the time. Now, this competition, is it, uh, is it a big deal? I thought it was just maybe like an exhibition. No, this is, this is the real deal. Um, this is, uh, although it's run cooperatively between Bass Pro Shops supporting it, uh, and it's being administrated by the World's Championship Duck Calling Contest Committee. The World's Championship, ha you have to qualify to, win to blow in the Worlds. However, this contest in some ways is going to be bigger and overshadow the World's Championship as the first place, tro first place prize package is going to be $20,000. They're paying the top 10. I, I don't remember the exact prizes, but I think if you make 10th place, you get like a $500 gift card. So. If you just blow pretty good and make the final round, it's been worth your time. The winner is going to walk away with a check for $10,000 in the new four-wheeler. So it is unprecedented in what Bass Pro Shop has done here in supporting the college sport. So can any of these guys sitting out here just jump up on stage and take this thing? That's the cool thing about it. Whereas the World's Championship, you have to qualify to blow in the World's Championship. In this contest, anybody who wants to pay their entry free and sign up can blow in it. How long does it take to get good at it? Some folks are lucky and get good at it in six months, but typically it takes about 10 or 12 years. At least that's what they told me, and they were right. So it, it's not like uh, you said you're from Arkansas. It's not uh, suey duck. No, that don't work. Suey duck don't get it done. But uh, sometimes if you rattle corn in a bucket, that'll help you out. Tell us how you got started calling ducks. My daddy took me in Aubrey, Arkansas when I was six years old. And uh, I, like I said, I've still got the same duck call in the drawer at my office that I got that Christmas. So what tips do you have for guys out here calling here today? It's just like it always was, it's call control. You'll hear the guys that are blowing today, as you can tell, they control their call every note from the very top, the loudest to the very lowest and softest things they do, their feed call, and they make it all fit together.
And the winner of this Open Championship was a guy named David St. John who walked away with a cool $10,000. Yeah, it's hip to do some duck calls, isn't it? And that'll do it for now. We certainly hope you had a great Thanksgiving and will enjoy the rest of your Thanksgiving weekend. And remember, as we did this weekend, we will not air Sports Files next Saturday in its usual 4.30 time slot because of special programming in association with our pledge drive. The other scheduled airings will take place as usual. Have yourselves a great week, and we'll see you next time. Production funding for Sports Files is made possible in part by... Infinity of Memphis has moved to Germantown Road just half mile north of Wolf Chase Galleria and is proud to support WKNO for its quality broadcasting and service to our community. Quality and service? No wonder Infinity of Memphis feels at home on WKNO.